Hi, it's Steve from Steve's house bringing you some particle goodness. Okay, back to normal. In this video, I'm going to show you a couple of tips that I picked up from the forums. Would you like to save cash? Well, this is the tip for you. Don't you just hate it when this happens? You've created a nice particle system. And you decide to bake it. And the baking takes forever. But eventually it finishes. And if I'm fair to Modo, I should say here that I've artificially made this slow by increasing the number of steps in the particle simulation, just to emphasize the point. So we've baked our simulation. We can scrub the timeline and we can view the simulation at different points in time. And then we think, oh, well, I'll just do another quick simulation just to see how things are going. Ah, yes. OK, that looks fine. Let's scrub the... Oh, no, the cache has gone. Every time you click on one of these buttons down here, the cache gets cleared out and you have to rebake. Well, that's a bit tedious. Wouldn't it be nice if we could save our caches independently of the Modo save file and then load them in when we needed them again? Well, we can. Back in Modo 601, Modo didn't have a proper particle simulation system, but it did have the real flow particle node, which enables you to load in pre-generated particle caches from the real flow software. We can also use the real flow particle node to save caches out of Modo. So let's add a real flow particle node. And now we can use this mystical point cache channel in the particle simulation. And we can use it to output the point cache into the real flow particles. Let's just rewire some things here. We don't want the replicator coming from the particle simulation anymore. We'll have it coming from the real flow particles. And finally, in the real flow particle properties, we need to specify a new sequence. I'll call the sequence my cache, showing my usual flair for imagination. And now when we cache the simulation, the particles will be going from the particle system into the real flow particle node and then out to disk. And we can scrub the timeline to see those particles being read in from the real flow files. And just to prove to you that they're saved out, here they are. We get one file per frame numbered according to this scheme. We can change stuff and rerun the simulation and the data will be updated to the disk files appropriately. What we can't do, however, is run a non-cached simulation. That will fail to work. The only way we can make that work again is to disconnect the real flow particles and then we can run the simulation. But notice that our cache is still preserved because it's not coming from the particle simulation, it's coming from the real flow node. This second tip is useful if you want to combine the results of two particle systems into a single stream of particles. Here we have two particle simulations being fed from two radial emitters and the results are going into two separate blobs. If I bring up the preview render, 
then you'll notice that the blobs are not merging together and that's because they're two separate items and blobs will only merge together if they're the same item. So how do we get around this predicament? Well the answer is remarkably simple but it's just not very obvious. If we add a particle modifier and a basic particle modifier will do what we can do is we can connect both particle simulations into the particle modifier and that will combine the streams together we can feed the output into one of the two blobs and now the blobs are merging together because they're feeding the same item and that's all there is to it thanks for watching this video I hope it was helpful and I'll see you next time